Hello and welcome to uh, the 15th lecture of uh, optical instrumentation. My name is Sharad Gupta and so far we have discussed three modules of this subject. Today we shall start fourth unit of this subject and the first part of fourth unit is holography. So, what is holography? Holography is a method of recording 3D images. The images, the pictures that we capture using normal camera or digital camera or our mobile phone, all these images are in two dimensional, they are called 2D images. Similarly, the television that we see at our home or the videos that we record using our mobile phones they all are in 2D because the images they are two dimensional images. They have x axis, y axis and the information of intensity in two dimensional is recorded either on a photographic film or on a sensor array. These images they do not have the information of depth while like our eyes, we can see things in 3D. We can judge which thing is near and which is far. Like if we see an object, we can judge for example, how an image is recorded. The light that is reflected from any object that reflected light rays are recorded on any photographic film or on any sensor array and in our eyes the light rays that are reflected from any object they are focused on the retina of our eye, right. So, this focus of our eyes they capture the information of intensity and also they capture the information of depth or I must say path difference. For example, the light ray that, that are reflected from my face will travel less than the light rays that are reflected from this screen, right. So, the light rays that are coming from this screen will travel more path than the light ray that are that are reflected from my face ok. So, due to this there is a path difference between these rays, the rays that are coming from this screen and the rays that are coming from my face right. Due to this path difference there is some phase difference and the information of this path difference and phase difference is important to record 3D images. Our normal day to day life cameras they only record intensity of light, they do not record information of this path difference or phase difference. So, this is the method of recording intensity as well as information of phase difference, this is called holography. So, it is a way of recording 3D images. You must have seen 3D movies in theatres. So, in few scenes of the 3D movie, we can see depth also with intensity, with information of intensity and colour. We can also, our light can also see depth. So, if we can see depth in images, we call them 3D images, ok. Today's topics are holography, recording a hologram, reconstructing image, its types and its applications. So, in conventional procedures for image acquisition, for example, photography, TV recording, etcetera, either video recording or photography, the intensity distribution is recorded only the information of intensity is recorded and 
phase information is lost the information of phase is lost so they are only 2d images they capture information of intensity and color in x and y axis but not in z axis they do not record depth okay one cannot directly record phase information in a light field so it is not easy to record the information of phase unless you compare it with a reference beam or if we compare it with a reference beam and then we record it then it is called a interference pattern okay phase information in a light field unless it is compared to some reference like in interferometers in interferometers we have seen in unit number 3 that we divide the monochromatic light into two beams one is reference and one is test beam same in spectrophotometers or in rayleigh's refractometer so we have to generate a interference pattern to record the information of phase okay so this approach was first suggested by dennis gabor in the year 1948 and he called this procedure holography so who invented holography dennis gabor it is a method of recording information from a three dimensional object so it is not like you can create a 3d uh, image using a 2d image no we need actual object for recording a 3d image for making a hologram okay so it is a method of recording information from a three dimensional object in such a way that three dimensional image may be subsequently constructed so the image is recorded in such a way when when we reconstruct the image the image feels like a 3d object okay although holography was invented before the invention of laser but because highly monochromatic light source is required to record holograms so the development of holography is closely linked with the development of lasers so as uh, as uh, better lasers came into market as more research was done on laser and better and better lasers were, were manufactured also better holograms were easily made and recorded okay so this is the image that explains the process of recording a hologram so as you can see there is a coherent light wave front that is coming from this direction this is a beam splitter it is dividing this wave front into uh, into two parts it is capped 45 degree from the incoming beam so half part goes here half part goes there this is the 3d object for which we have to record a hologram we have to record 3d image so this is just reference beam this is mirror it is reflecting the reference beam and also this is the object this object is illuminated using this coherent light beam so it will reflect light from its different different surfaces and accordingly this wave front will be converted like this okay so this is the wave front and this is the reference beam this is called object beam so they will uh, illuminate this photographic plate or a sensor array right so photographic plate what we will get on this photographic plate we will get a interference pattern interference of this reference beam and this object beam so this will have information of intensity and also it will have information of phase difference or path difference by because this is interference pattern and this wave front is modified like this and so it is compared with this reference beam so we get interference pattern so this is a hologram now we have recorded a hologram how do we see that the image is 3d on 2d so we have to again illuminate this 
photographic film using the same wavelength of light using a coherent or same coherent light source of same wavelength we have to illuminate this reference beam and when we do this viewer over here will feel that there is a 3D object kept here. So, how do we record a hologram? A photographic plate is exposed simultaneously to waves of light scattered by the object and to the waves of light from reference. So, object beam F and reference beam. So, simultaneously we are exposing a photographic plate. So, what we will get? We will get a interference pattern. Because of their high degree of mutual coherence, the two sets of waves produce an interference pattern on the plate, right? which is recorded in the photographic emulsion and forms a hologram. What, is, what do we call a image uh, that, a, that is uh, created using holography? A hologram. You must have seen holograms on books, on products and a lot of things. The photographic film is now pro processed and illuminated with only the reference beam to reconstruct the 3D image. So, let us look at the diagram over here. So, rest of the part is removed, the object is removed, we are, we are uh, illuminating the hologram with the uh, reference beam and what happens? This, this interference pattern will diffract the incoming light beam in such a way that a viewer if he is viewing the hologram from here, it seems like there is a actual object kept here. So, to his eyes, he will feel, he will, uh, he will look at a 3D image that, that looks like exact object and if, if he moves this photographic plate or I can say hologram, then this 3G, 3D object will also move. If you take a simple photograph in your hand or if you take a mobile phone and you, uh, you uh, view a photo, if you move your phone or photo like this, it does not move. So, it is a 2D image, but if you move this photographic film, this image will move. Okay. So, this was about how to record a hologram and how to reconstruct image using a hologram. Now, next is what are the types of holography or holograms? So, one way is to classify the way of recording hologram on axis and off axis holography. And types of holograms, reflection and transmission holograms. So, on axis holography, if reference beam and object beam the beam that is coming from a uh, source and the beam that is coming from the object, they are coaxial. Then this method is called on axis holography. So, as you can see, this is monochromatic light source, the reference beam is coming on the photosensitive plate, and this is the object for which we have to record the hologram object. Okay. So, the light that is coming from the object that is O2 is object beam. So, they are both coaxial, there is no, there is 0 degree angle between these, these two beams. So, it is called on axis holography. This meta, method is generally used for a, a semi transparent object or you can say the objects that are not opaque. Okay. So, this method of recording hologram can be used for semi-transparent objects and the first hologram that was recorded by Dennis Gabor was on axis, uh, was recorded using this method on axis holography. Next is off axis holography. If there is a certain angle between reference beam and object beam, then this method is called off axis holography. So, look at this diagram. This is a monochromatic light source, laser. Okay. 
this is a beam splitter beam splitter is divided into two parts so half goes in this direction half goes in this direction this is a mirror again it is reflected by the mirror and uh, this is a lens collimating lens it it is uh, sorry uh, this is beam uh, uh, this is uh, this is diverging the beam okay and this is collimating the beam so we are we are spreading the light okay so now this is a parallel wave front coming in this direction and over here again this is a parallel wave front so this is our reference beam this is reference beam and this is object beam as you can see the light is going at the object it is illuminating the object and mm, now uh, the light rays that are reflected from the object are falling uh, uh, on this holographic plate and this is over here reference beam is coming this is object beam so a uh, interference pattern is recorded on this beam as you can see there is a certain angle between reference beam and object beam so this is called off axis holography normally this method is uh, used for recording holograms because we can record holograms of uh, opaque objects also okay so this is off axis holography and that was on axis holography remember if uh, reference beam and uh, object beam are making a certain angle then it is called off axis holography and if uh, they are coaxial then it is called on axis holography and this is how we uh, see the image we reconstruct the image using same reference beam as you can see this is the reference beam this is the image uh, this is the holographic plate on which image is recorded and uh, if uh, for the viewer he, he will see a image that will feel like a real object okay next transmission and reflection holograms okay so as you can see the method of recording a transmission hologram and reflection hologram are shown in this diagram if we are illuminating the photographic plate such that the object wave and the reference wave they are on the same side the object wave is coming from this direction and sorry reference beam is coming from this direction object beam is coming from this direction okay so they are on the same side so the hologram that we get in this condition is called transmission hologram transmission hologram so as you can see this is a method of off axis holography because there is a angle between reference beam and object beam and also both the beams are illuminating the photographic plate from the same direction so this method records transmission holograms and the interference pattern you can see the lines will be drawn like this on the other hand how reflection hologram is recorded like this if photographic plate is illuminated such that photographic film is illuminated such that the reference beam and object beam they are falling on the photographic film from opposite directions from opposite directions as you can see reference beam is coming from this direction object beam is coming from this direction okay so in this condition the hologram that we get is called reflection hologram what does it called it is called reflection hologram so when we are using a transmission hologram viewer has if viewer has a transmission hologram then reference beam has to fall from this direction and viewer will see from this direction where is viewer in case of transmission hologram viewer is here here in case of transmission hologram so if we illuminate this photographic film with the reference beam viewer will see the 3d image from this direction okay while 
in case of reflection hologram, viewer has to be over here. This is the viewer. So, reference beam is coming from this direction, it will get reflected from this interference pattern and viewer will see 3 D image over here on this photographic film. So, in this case viewer is on the opposite side of the reference beam, in this case viewer is at the same side of the reference beam if he has to view the 3 D image. Okay? So, this was about reflection and transmission holograms. Next, we shall see some applications of holography. Arts, it is used in entertainment, right, for uh, recording 3D images, 3D movies. It has a potential and it can be used for data storage. It can be used in dynamic holography. We shall see what is dynamic holography. It can be used in interferometry, microscopy. It can also be used, it is used for uh, designing and developing sensors and biosensors. It can be used for security purpose. Uh, you can uh, you can see every, every ATM card, every credit card and all the expensive products and even simple products like books, they put holograms on everything because it is not easy to record hologram, it is not easy to copy hologram, right? Hologram needs same 3 D object from which it is recorded to record another hologram. It is not like you can copy a hologram from a, from a hologram. Okay. So, for security purpose, it holograms are used. Other applications are electrical and electronic products hologram dockets for vehicle number plate, again high security holograms for credit card as I, we have already discussed, fine. Now, out of these we shall discuss uh, one application in details that is data storage. Currently, the holographic techniques that are available, they can produce about 1000 different images per second and with what resolution? 1024 into 1024 bit resolution that is 1 m 1 megabit and 1 megabit how many 1000 images per second. So, it is 1 gigabit per second. With the right type of medium this would result in about 1 gigabit per second writing speed this is a very fast speed in comparison to currently that is available using semiconductor devices, 1 gigabit per second writing speed. Reading speed is much higher. Read speeds can surpass this and experts believe 1 terabit per second readout is possible, so fast, so fast 1 terabits can be read in 1 second using this technology. So, a lot of research is going on, but research is costly and it is time taking. In 2005, companies such as Optware and Maxwell produced a 120 millimeter disc like a CD, only 12 centimeter diameter like a CD that uses holographic layer to store data. How much data? 3.9 terabytes, 3.9 terabytes on a single disc of 12 centimeter diameter. It was called holographic versatile disc, but it was not commercially available because readers are costly, writers are costly and disc is also costly. We need cost effective solutions. Till September 2014, no commercial product has been released. Another company that is named InPhase Technologies was developing a competing format, but it went bankrupt in 2011 and another company purchased all its assets with the name Aconia Graphics.
ok. So, this is a simple diagram that shows how a, a, a holographic technology can be used to record uh, data. So, data will be recorded in form of holograms, this is the recording medium, it is a crystal. Whereas, magnetic and optical data storage records information a bit at a time in a linear fashion, right. They record data in a linear fashion. Holographic storage is capable of recording and reading millions of bits in parallel. Millions of bits can be read parallelly and suppose if, if we have any processor that can process these millions of bits simultaneously then it will be a very fast device. Enabling data transfer rates greater than those of traditional optical storage, ok. So, dynamic holography like recording a photograph and recording a video. So, photograph recording is a static, video recording is dynamic, right. So, in a static holography recording developing and reconstructing occurs sequentially and a permanent hologram is recorded like a photographic film that was used earlier in old cameras. There we can also do this dynamically if we have correct materials. There also exist some holographic materials that do not need developing process and can record a hologram in a very short time. So, we can use such materials for dynamic holography. This allows one to use holography to perform some simple, op simple operations in all optical way, ok. So, all the operations recording, processing, if all these can be performed in, uh, in uh, parallel way, then it will be very much beneficial. So, these are the references, this was all about holography. Uh, in next lecture, we shall discuss about optical fibers. Thank you.